working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single and this is fitting new hand wheels to the steam valves on the turret. The original hand wheels shown in this image were ok but they don't look right really. When you look at the full size sterling single, here it is, there isn't a turret in that position anyway. Here are the original hand wheels and they're very well made, they've even got a squared centre that fitted onto the square shaft of the valve, but they just don't look right. What I'm going to do is fit some of these nice brass ones. Part of this next sequence is incomplete. I'm not showing the turning down of the end of the valve spindle, mainly because I forgot to press record on the camera, because I was really concerned about how far the spindle was sticking out of the chuck and held by its threads. But I was very gentle with the spindle, and I turned the end of it so it was just a longer 6BA thread. Then all I had to do, and I'm showing this on video because I pressed record at this stage, is extend the thread further down the shaft to accept the new hand wheels. These are 6BA threads. I must admit I'm very pleased with my tailstock die holder extension adapter. It seems to work very well, and the die holders fit into the end of it, and it holds the die holder perfectly square to the work. But the main reason I like this system is just the time it takes to use it. I don't have to put the dies into the die stock, I just have to fit the die stock onto the end of the adapter. In my opinion, anything that speeds up the job is going to be a good thing. So once I've cut the thread, I just reverse the direction of the die holder and here's the thread that it's just cut. And it looks okay to me, so I'm going to fit it back into the part of the valve that it came out of. This one I think needs a little bit of oil because it's quite tight. The others were okay, but one was a bit tight to start with. The new hand wheel simply screws onto the shaft and then I'm going to use a lock nut to lock it in place. But before I use the lock nut I'm going to take the hand wheel off again and clean up the gland nut. And now it looks nice and shiny. These excellent hand wheels are made by a friend of mine. And they're not made by a CNC machine. They're made on a rotary table on a milling machine with a human being at the controls. And they are of course available from my usual supplier, Blackgates Engineering. What I would normally do is just buy a set of three steam taps. But these taps are so beautifully made, I just didn't want to waste them. So they're going to go back on the engine, one for the steam blower, and the other two for the steam feed to live steam injectors that will be fitted to the engine in due course. This is a photograph of one of the live steam injectors actually fitted to the engine. This is Stirling Single Number 1, which is at the National Railway Museum. And it's a real thing of beauty. The strange thing about it though is where it's fitted. Have a look at this other photograph. The injector control valves for the steam and the water appear to be sticking up out of the running board. So it would suggest that when this engine was running down the track at about 60 miles an hour, probably the fireman had to climb out of the cab, run along the running boards, adjust the valves to make the injector inject the water and then run back into the cab. That was if he was lucky enough not to get his arm caught in the wheel, or worse than that, fall off the engine. In this next photograph, these are the ventilation holes or whatever they are in the splasher. They look really good, particularly when they're lined out in the black and white paint. They really do look great. But in the later versions of these Stirling single locomotives, they did away with these holes in the splasher because I think there may have been some accidents with people's limbs going through the splasher into the wheel. So I suppose that was an early form of health and safety, but I think it just spoilt the lines of the locomotive. Back to the job I'm currently doing, and this is valve spindle number 2, having the 6BA thread extended on the end of it. After I reduced the diameter of the end of it by turning off the squared section that went into the original hand wheels. And in exactly the same way, I fitted the hand wheel to the valve, but only after I'd removed the gland nut and polished it up. And finally, here I have the trio of new hand wheels fitted to the valve spindles. If you study the photograph of the back head of this locomotive, it's earlier on in this video, you will see that the hand wheels on that are lower down and painted red. But I'm not sure whether to paint these red or not, because there isn't a turret on the full size locomotive. Three bright red wheels at the top of the cab may just look a bit out of place. I don't know yet, I'll see how I go on. There isn't really much to do at this locomotive other than the paint job, which is going to be the biggest part of the job, and I may not feature that too much in the videos because you can get too much of a good thing. 
Not only does the engine have to be painted green and brown and black, it has to be lined. And I've never done that freehand, it'll be quite interesting doing it. I do know that John at the Steam Workshop is really good at hand lining, so I'm able to get some hints and tips from John, and you never know, he may even give me a hand with it. What I'm doing at the moment is refitting the valve spindle assemblies complete with the new hand wheels to their respective valve bodies. And the middle hand wheel on the middle spindle appears to stick out fractionally more than the others. So I think I'll probably take that one apart again and machine a little bit more off the length of the spindle and thread it a little bit deeper. What I also have to do is fit the whistle valve. I'm going to use one of CME Engineering's whistle valves, which are very good indeed, and these are also available from Blackgates Engineering. As the locomotive is currently sat on my sideboard, I don't really want to do too much work on it in the house. Refitting the valves is not a problem, and I suppose I could fit the pressure gauge, but I do want to give the back head a coat of paint. So I'll wait until the engine's back in the workshop before I fit the whistle and the whistle valve and the injectors, etc, 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 not forgetting painting it. The main problem is that there are many jobs I have to do that are in front of this one. I'm only doing this because it's my engine and I can do. I'm going to be restarting the How to Build a Model Steam Engine series, but before anybody moans at me, making the video series How to Build a Model Steam Engine is really a labour of love, and I have other jobs well in front of this, and besides which, when I first started the series, I did mention that I was going to do one episode per month, and I've done nine so far in much less than nine months, so anyone who's currently building a Stuart Victoria You've got plenty to go out with the nine episodes, but don't worry, there will be some more. The main thing is, though, I still have to work and earn a living to pay the bills, and my support via Patreon and the bit of advertising from YouTube is not exactly sensational. But I never started making these videos to make a financial profit anyway. I did it to put something back and help people out. But if you're feeling really generous and would like to become a Patreon subscriber, you can pledge as little as a dollar a month, and that works out at $12 a year for all this entertainment and useful information. I don't want to have to make everything linkable through Patreon so only Patreon subscribers can see the content. That wouldn't be good because quite a few people send me PayPal donations and gift vouchers to Blackgates Engineering. And for these donations, and you know who you are, I thank you very much indeed. They make a big difference. I buy a lot of parts all the time to make these videos. And this part of the job is now completed. It's starting to look a lot better. I'm much happier with these valves than the other ones. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.